Hello Dr. Humans, welcome back to the channel and today's video which is all about demystifying the difference between hemodialysis and hemofiltration. Before we jump into today's video, I wanted to make sure that you knew about our free GN tutorial. It's basically a cheat code for learning GN and I want you to have it. If you haven't already, then go ahead, click that link and claim your free GN tutorial. Dialysis in and of itself is the movement of molecules across a semi-permeable membrane. So here we have the semi-permeable membrane and these little pores and they're all a fixed size. And we've got some small molecules, we've got some medium-sized molecules and we have some cells and protein here like albumin. And um, this is the blood and this is the dialysis fluid. So I've got two questions for you guys. The first question is in dialysis, there are only two ways for molecules to move across this membrane. I want you to tell me what those two mechanisms are. And second of all, I want you to tell me on this diagram which molecules will not move across the membrane. Um, diffusion. Diffusion's one, yes. Any others? Any other takers? Is it convection, the second? Option. Yes, convection. Marvellous. And for bonus points, which of these molecules or substances or whatever are not going to move across this membrane in hemodialysis anyways? And the molecules that don't move, red blood cells and albumin? Yes, exactly. So the cells and the albumin are not going to move. So we're just going to unpack that in just a little bit more detail. So the dialysis principle you just told me were diffusion and convection. So diffusion is the movement of molecules across the semipermeable membrane from a high concentration to a low concentration. And like we said, these cells and albumin are going to stay behind in the bloodstream. They are not going to move ac across. So small molecules like urea and bigger molecules are going to move across along their concentration gradient from high to low. And they'll do that until the concentrations on both sides are equal, until they equilibrate. Then no more solute will move. And another important concept is that small molecules are going to do this much faster than large molecules. And that makes sense, right? Because small molecules will just fit through the pores super easy. They'll just whiz across. Whereas larger molecules, even though they can technically fit through the pores, if they're all trying to do it at once, they kind of bunch up and get in each other's way. It's just a lot harder. So small molecules diffuse faster than large molecules. Coming on to convection, this is also known as solute drag or ultrafiltration. So all of those things mean exactly the same. And this time, what we're going to be doing is moving solute across with water. So now we have water on this side. And remember that water is just a series of very small molecules, right? Water is tiny and it's going to move through these pores with relative ease. But we all know that when water molecules get together, they have a force, right? We've all been on a boat. <laughs> we felt moved around by water. So water, when the molecules get together, it causes a force. It causes hydrostatic pressure, which can move things around. And that's what's going to happen here. So instead of moving along the concentration gradient, this time they're kind of hitching a ride with water and being kind of forced through that membrane. So convection is when water brings solutes along for the ride. And a really important concept here is in hemodialysis, the reason that water is moving across to the other side is about hydrostatic pressure differences. So it's not about osmosis. Um, so we're not putting anything osmotically in there to drag the water. It's all pressure differences. So now I want to just take those concepts and connect them to some of the clinical terms that we use in practice. So diffusion, the movement of molecules along their concentration gradient, is called hemodialysis. So dialysis is the diffusion part. And that's very typical of the patients we see on the renal unit. Convection, when we drag those molecules across with water, that is called hemofiltration. And you're probably more familiar with that term being used in ICU when patients are on the filter. And then hemodiafiltration is when we use both of these at the same time. And just to further unpack these clinical terms, you'll see these abbreviations. So when we're talking about hemodialysis on the renal unit, we're talking about intermittent hemodialysis, and that can be HD, hemodialysis, or hemodiafiltration, which is what we're going to talk about today. You also have this term called continuous renal replacement therapy, or CRRT. And and I see they also use these abbreviations, CVVHF and CVVHDF. Now, all this means the C stands for continuous 
and VV stands for veno venous. So if you think about the patients in ICU, they've got a line in, it's usually in a vein, <laughs> and the blood's coming out of the vein and going back to the vein. So continuous veno venous, and then you just tack on one of these, hemofiltration, hemodiafiltration. Too easy. So got it. That's all the clinical terms. But now let's see how these treatments are different when the patients are connected to them in ICU or on the ward. So for hemodialysis, um, we connect the patient to the machine, their blood will leave them and it will go through this circuit at fairly high flows, typically 300 mils per minute. Their blood will be um, put through the dialysis chamber, which contains a lot of these semi-permeable membranes, which are arranged in little straws, and that's just really to increase the surface area for diffusion. So the blood will move through this chamber, and what we're, what's happening here is mostly diffusion with just a smidge of convection and that cleaned blood will be returned to the patient. And alongside this, we have dialysis fluid that's moving in the opposite direction. Um, and the, the reason for that opposite flow is just to maximize that diffusion gradient along the way. So typically the patients will be connected for three to five hours at these high blood, blood flows. Um, and if we do take off fluid in this process, that's known as ultrafiltration. So in ICU, hemofiltration is a little bit different. So again, patients connected, their blood leaves them, but this time it's at very low volumes, very low volumes, because obviously they need their blood volume in ICU. That blood will enter the dialysis chamber. Only this time, we're going to add some fluid to the chamber. So along with their blood, we're going to put fluid in there, and that is going to create a hydrostatic pressure that will push solutes across the membrane so we can remove them. So here it's mostly convection with a little bit of diffusion and we can also add some fluid after the chamber to make sure they don't lose their blood volume and of course you can program this to take off fluid as well and return both the blood and the balanced fluid to the patient. But because this is happening at low blood flows we tend to run this around the clock sort of 24 hours a day. So how does that compare to um, hemodiafiltration as performed in a satellite centre? So hemodiafiltration, we just add in a few bits. So we've got a dialysis patient in the unit, the blood is leaving them at high flows, it's going through that dialysis chamber again, easy. We still have that dialysis fluid going in the opposite direction, so we've got that lovely diffusion gradient, so diffusion is happening. And now this time, we are going to have hydrostatic pressure gradients, which are going to push fluid across, but it's not that we're necessarily putting fluid in, in this scenario. So in this particular setup, they're not putting fluid in with the blood, but what they are doing is they're creating enough of a hydrostatic pressure difference that we're going to suck <laughs> that patient's water out of their blood. So if the blood going in there, we're going to extract the water from the blood, and that is going to take the solute with it. So we've also got convection happening here. But because we're sucking all that water out of the blood, by the end of this chamber, they're going to have quite concentrated blood unless we add fluid. So we do this thing where we add fluid at the end and that's called post dilution and then we return that blood and fluid to the patient. So a little bit different from the ICU version and I guess just to point out that this post dilution mode because we're not putting extra fluid into this chamber and we're relying on that hydrostatic pressure difference it is advantageous to have good access for dialysis and good flow rates in order to be connected to this kind of circuit. So that was the difference between hemodialysis, hemofiltration, and even hemodiafiltration. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you are studying for your exams and you want to know more about dialysis and end-stage renal failure and its many complications, then be sure to check out our deluxe membership over on our website, which includes a whole session dedicated to this, packed with MCQs and so much gold for your written exam. So if that sounds like something you need in your life, be sure to head on over to our website and check out the Deluxe Membership. And otherwise, stay tuned here on YouTube for some more high yield learning. Bye! Lottie would very much like to be part of today's video. She keeps interrupting. Hi YouTube! Hi! I'm in a cone because I'm trying to cut my own ear off with my paws. <laughs>